There's too much of Sunday churches coming into our church. Have you seen some videos online about some camp meetings? Have you ever seen them? Okay. Hello, friends. Welcome to the YouTube channel. Listen, in today's video, I got Randy Skid on my screen once again. Listen, this is the guy, man. I love me. Elder, pastor, Randy Skeet, man. I wish I could memorize scripture as well as he does. <laughs> I don't think. I don't work hard enough. <laughs> and Anyway, uh, that could be a whole other discussion. I, I think this guy is gifted, man. Now, in this video, he is addressing uh, the church. And he's addressing the Seven Adventist Church for a number of reasons, right? One in particular is the fact the world is creeping into the church and there are different worship styles that are coming in, including music, drum, speaking in tongue, and I found it very interesting that he made reference to this part of the video because, um, remember I did this video recently. Heal. This is a space you can't get in this space. This is a space of heal. This is a space for deliverance. Yeah. This is a space for promotion. Anybody glad? Say yeah. Oh, I the presence of God. Interestingly enough, when I spoke about this, I realized there were a few of us who did. I think Brother Lawrence spoke about it. Uh, Andrew Enrique spoke about it. I spoke about it. And it was like, uh, so there were a number of us who spoke about this. And uh, again, I guess Randy Skeet is listening to those videos. Obviously, he's paying attention. <laughs> but he, he addresses a number of issues in the church. And I think it's very fair when it comes to musical instruments, especially the drum. You know, I don't make a big deal about it, but I can understand exactly where he's coming from. You know, the law of association. He's going to address that. Uh, and it also, he speaks about Ellen White being inspired. And he kind of touched on, on the tongue stuff a little bit. But he also placed emphasis on the idea that we have been called to go and teach all nations. We're not to be taught by them. Um, even those that are in churches that are doing it wrong and we understand the order of worship in many churches is not correct uh so i really appreciate the way he went about doing this anyway let me get out of the way check out randy skid's video here and then we'll come back and have a final talk psalm 150 verse 3 to 6 enjoins us to praise the lord mm -hmm. with the sound of trumpets uh -huh. loud cymbals mm -hmm. drums etc mm -hmm. and uh, and even dance, mm -hmm. but our church frowns at these. Mm -hmm. Is the is the use of controlled and res uh, is the controlled and responsible use of musical instruments like drums and trumpets during our worship services wrong? Since the Bible encourages their use to praise God, mm -hmm. additionally, is there a reason we should not be, we should not sing inspirational songs except it is a hymn? We should not sing inspirational songs. All right. I don't know. I'm not sure what an inspirational song is. Now, I was talking to some very lovely young people. There is no sin in an instrument. That's a piano. That's an organ. But be honest with me. Which one sounds more churchy? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You hear organ, church. That's no condemnation of the piano. But you hear an organ, you're a church now. If you go to a rock concert, do you see a piano? What do you see? Your guitar, what else do you see? Uh-huh, <laughs> drums, guitar, absolutely indispensable. Now, can you run the church service without drums? Yes. yes. We'll introduce them cause a problem for some. Yes. yes. Now, Ella White writes, I don't recall where, I can get it for you. Just before the close of probation, there will be a style of worship that is based on loud noise in the Adventist churches. And she mentions drums particularly. Noise, loud noise, deadening the senses, making people unable to make intelligent decisions. She said, just before the close of probation, this will come into the church. Loud, noisy worship. And the central instrument is the drum. There's no sin in the drum. As I was telling my young friends, there's something called the law of association. Are you with me? Law of association. Now, if a guy commits a crime, he, he holds up a liquor store, and you're standing right next to him, and the police come in, they stop him and you. They will arrest him and you, 
because you're right there. Are you with me? Later on, they'll sort it out. Are you following me? By association. Have you ever heard of the magazine Playboy? Yes. Don't buy it. Don't look at it, but you've heard of it. What's the logo for Playboy? The head of a rabbit. Yes. That's why the girls are called bunnies. The head of a rabbit is the logo for this pornographic magazine. But who made rabbits? God. On the sixth day. I would not take the head of a rabbit and put it on a t-shirt. Are you following me? Because people seeing that will not think of creation. They'll think of Playboy. That guy's a preacher. Why is he advertising Playboy? No, I'm advertising creation. But who would believe that? Now that's the law of association. Now the rabbit has been associated with Playboy, so I distance myself from the rabbit. Are you with me? You take dreadlocks. <laughs> Blessings upon you. You go back to Jamaica. God bless Jamaica. There's a religion called Rastafarianism. Dreadlocks. They smoke stuff. Part of their worship is to regard a man as a god. Who's that man? Haile Selassie. Yes. They see visions when they have this. They smoke that stuff. Contrary to what the Bible teaches. So when you run around with your dreadlocks, you may not be a Rastafari. Are you following me? But what comes to people's minds? You, you see, the problem is when someone sees you, where do you want the person's mind to go? Because the Bible says God holds us responsible for the influence we exert on others. Mm -hmm. So if I come to church looking like I know, a rapper and some little boy starts dressing that way, God blames me. And so some things in and of themselves may be innocent, but because of the association that has developed between them and something else, it's best to leave it alone. No one will go to hell because he doesn't play a drum. No one will go to hell for playing a drum. But again, I say, what image do you project? So we must be wise as serpents, harmless as doves, and avoid worship styles that resemble the other churches when god gave the great gospel commission matthew 28 18 to 20 and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth what does verse 19 say go ye therefore and do what teach it did not say go ye therefore and learn with respect to the gospel you can learn physics and chemistry, not the gospel. Go ye therefore and teach. Teach them what I've taught you. Don't let them teach you. You go teach them how to sing, how to worship, how to give, how to study the Bible, how to run their homes, how to improve their health, how to deal with the state. You teach them all things that I have commanded you. Teach them. Don't let them teach you. There's too much of Sunday churches coming into our church. Have you seen some videos online about some camp meetings? Have you ever seen them? Okay. Next question. <laughs> okay. It says here, Pastor, okay. I notice you, you just like some other, you're just like some other Adventist quotes from the writings of Ellen White uh -huh. a lot. Mm -hmm. What do you say to those who accuse Adventists of upholding Ellen White above the Bible? Is that and, and that's another part to it. The Seventh-day Adventist Church does not elevate Ellen White's writings above the Bible. Amen. Absolutely not. I mean, she herself says, the Bible and the Bible alone do not put her writings on the level of the Bible. They are not. Now, she was as inspired as Isaiah. Are you with me? But there are books in the Bible that are not part of the Bible. They are mentioned in the Bible that are not in the canon of the Bible. You understand? You read Chronicles and Kings, the book of Jasher, the book of Dispersion, the book of the Kings. We don't know what those books are, but they were used back then, but they're no longer part of the canon. Ellen White's writings are a commentary on the Bible, but an inspired commentary given to this church, not the world, to this church to bless. And she has kept this church from one catastrophe after the other. 
doctrinally. Mm -hmm. We do not elevate her above, but when I preach an Adventist church, because reading her writings is falling out of style, I deliberately quote from her to try to stimulate someone to go take a peek at Steps to Christ or Desire of Ages or Patriarchs and Prophets. Amen. You become blessed. Mm -hmm. So the church does not view Ellen White's writings on the same level of the Bible. Not absolutely not. It's beneath, way beneath. You can't have a competitor. All right, friends, this was amazing. Randy's key was definitely on point. You know, I think there is um, there's something scary happening in Adventism. And what's happening is that there is a loss of identity. It's happening with the attack on the spirit of prophecy. It's happening with some of, some of our local churches, their styles of worship and what they're bringing in and stuff like that. It, my job is not to condemn the church, man. Listen, that's not who I am. But we should be concerned to say a lot of the things that some of our men are doing are not the things that we used to do at all. You know, when you look at how the church used to be and how the church is today, it is very obvious that we've gotten to a state where we don't even recognize our identity anymore, our true nature. Our, you know, anyway, a lot more could be said. I, I love my church. My goal is never to condemn the church. I want to make it abundantly clear. There's a lot, there's a lot of people doing that. That's not me. Um, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says, You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Listen, as the seven divinists, I believe we have a particular call, anointed of God, a prophetic movement. We don't need to apologize for believing what we believe, especially in a time when there is so much confusion in the world. We can simply stand um, as Seventh-day Adventists. The very name, Seventh-day Adventists, is a rebuke to many in the Protestant church. But I think when we begin to adopt some of the Babylonians' ways of worship, we begin to do this in the name of, I guess, fitting in, you know, kind of like Israel wanted a king kind of thing, you know. And when they got a king, they didn't know what to do with themselves. You know, it's a scary thing. And I think, um, like, we can learn a lot from, from the ancient Israel, for example. Uh, I'm thinking of a story right now. This wasn't part of my note, but yeah, there it is. In Judges chapter 2, what happened here is that we were told when they entered into the promised land, they were supposed to get rid of the practices and as well as the people in the land, the Canaanites. God said, you should make no league with them of this altar, of this land. You shall throw down the altar, but you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? So, wherefore, I will not drive them out from before you, and they shall be a stone in your sides, and their God shall be a snare unto you. Uh, Actually, when you go through the book of Judges, you see in this cycle of up and down of people repenting and the, the, the Israel repented and then they went back to doing it again and God arose a judge. And then it's like that cycle went back and forth. But the, the message here is this. When the people of God do not get rid of the things that is offensive to God. What happens is that the enemies have um, power to mess with us, number one. Number two, we start having thorns in our side, and that's very scary. And their gods will be a snare unto, unto you and I. Friends, this is, this is, we're not just reading history here. We're reading things that are happening in the church, and I think... If we're not careful as Christians, as Seventh-day Adventists, how we worship, what we do uh, with the Lord's movement and how we respond in these last days, um, we're going to have the same experience that ancient Israel had. You know, friends, um, it's not safe. I mean, it's not wise. It's otherwise, somebody says. 
But again, um, I could say a lot. I think we, we, we need to be praying for our churches, man. I love my church. I love the Seventh Adventist Church. I tell people all the time in this channel, I plan on dying as one. But there's a lot of stuff that we do that I'm like, yo, that's not, <laughs> that's not good. You know, so um, no condemnation. It's just that it's not good. But the Lord is working with his people. We know that. And I, I never advocate for people to jump ship and go, go somewhere else because... I mean, find a church where the teaching and the preaching is correct. It might not be as easy because we have a few local churches in a certain area. But what I would like to see is we are striving to be better. We are striving to live in accordance with the law and the will of God. We are striving to do his will. And if I see that, I think it's all good. So my goal is not to go around picking the flaws of the church and condemn the church. I think the naysayers are doing it good enough. The critics are already doing that. So um, anyway, friends, I think Randy's kid was, was, was good with that. I just wanted to share a few thoughts on that. I don't have much to add to it. But listen, man, we got to pray for our people. We got to pray. We got we to gotta go back to being a peculiar people, a people of the book, a people who love God. And like Jesus says in Romans, I mean, Revelation 3, I think it's verse 19, for as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. So that's what needs to happen. To lukewarm Laodicea, there must be some serious repentance. Anyway, individually and collectively. Share your thought and perspective with me. I want to hear from you. Like and subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more. I'll see you in the next video. Check out our merch. Check out our merch. Go to the store. Find something to put on as well. Until next time, have a good one. Bye.